Pastorius solo album in 1976, Come On, Come Over. It may sound familiar to you. I was playing it just a little bit and I got lost in the sauce, so to speak. So I started playing and I just kind of was feeling it and almost completely forgot what I did. And I did this lick and I did this run and everybody was asking me, okay, what was that? What did you do? I couldn't even remember. And it's funny because you go back to those times where you just get lost in the music and you start to play something that you just did not even understand yourself what you did i kind of knew it was luck and it was preparation at the same time so i want to talk a little bit about that i had the arsenal i had the tools i had the theory behind it and i kind of relied more on my ear than i did something that was premeditated so if you go to play and you end up playing something or if you ever played something that you've just what was that i think those are the priceless and precious moments of playing where i think the relationship between the music and internally your own voice Come together as one so it's a great thing to know the vocabulary behind it to know the theory behind it but if you can't gel those two things together what's the point okay so enough of that i thought it would be pretty fun and pretty amusing to see me show you guys this lick in real time trying to remember exactly what i played and if you have not heard that song strongly suggest that you go take a listen to that iconic song uh, the bass line that jocko was playing is just absolutely ridiculous it's very percussive tons of ghost notes inside of it and we may go over that at a later date but i want to show you or try to get through this lick that i played uh some years ago and i and i was looking back into my instagram feed if you guys haven't you know followed me on there go check that out uh it was a while ago though so i'm scrolling and i'm just looking and i saw that post and i was like man what did i do i kind of surprised myself so let's go through this together. Yeah, so it started off something like that. So it it starts on the end of one. One. And so what I'm playing is I'm playing the D and the octave. If you don't know by now, the key of the song is in D. And we're working with the Mixolydian scale, the major scale with the flat seven. So this is what this lick is based off of. Hit the octave on the and. Hit the flat five to the four, or the sharp four to the four, whichever way you want to look at it. So octave, flat five, in the key of D to the four. F, F sharp, okay? I have to remember real time exactly what I did. So the order of it is pretty, pretty kind of, Kind of crazy because I'm using open notes. So when you're using open notes, well, at least to me, it gets a little confusing as far as the timing and the placement and exactly where those open notes land. So if you want to take this section by section, which is what we're going to do. So section by section, one, and that's one section. And there's a lot of inflections in this as well, but I want to learn the notes first so you can get the notes down. And these are all uh, 16th notes. These are all 16th notes, so you don't have to worry about any timing or anything like that. So once you start on that and one, and, and real quick, just keep in mind, guys, when you're following along, take it section by section, phrase by phrase. It's a pretty lengthy lick, so I think it lasted over four measures of. Yeah, over four measures. So it's pretty long. It's pretty hard to retain and to remember at first, but if you take it section by section, Follow along. You may notice some hand positions or fingerings as we go along. I don't want to make it too long, but I want to guide you through this entire lick. So section by section, if I'm going too fast, like I said, you can slow this down just a little bit. So one and after that B, we go back down to the A. One. Okay. So after the B, we go back down to the A. 
F E D. Open D, okay? One. F E D. B. Okay, now that note afterwards, we're playing the B. So I'm just taking note by note and playing it back over and over again. Just repetition. Repetition is key. I always say that. After the B, we have A, B, C, D. Okay, so I tried to pick out things that I would remember about this because it's pretty easy to remember A, B, C, D. The notes A, B, C, D. Okay, it's pretty, it's pretty easy to remember that. So if you want to take it like that, you can. If you want to take it note by note, you can. Section by section. Just that much. Three notes, four notes, five notes. Okay, let's keep going. I want to talk too much through this. Here's the rest of the lick. One and. B, A, B, C, D. It's very important to get all of these notes right in order because when it comes back down to it, you won't be able to land on that downbeat or the correct downbeat when it comes that time. So one and B, A, F, E, D, B, A, B, C, D, E. All right, that's the next note. So after we go through that phrase, I'm going to start at the B. Walk back down. So now in this next section, we start to play a pentatonic scale as if we were in the key of D, a D major pentatonic scale, but adding one note inside of it. Okay, so adding that minor third inside of that. So that's the move that you'll make when you get to the open E. So E, F, F sharp, A, B, D, open D. Okay, so start from there. Let's start from the top. One and okay, it's very repetitive, very, very repetitive, and it's easy to get lost because of all of the open notes. So just taking it slow will definitely help out a lot. Now the next section is actually a pretty simple concept because you're playing a C major seven arpeggio, but you're leading off on that seventh note on the B. Well, technically the seventh note. So this is what I mean. So, so C major seven arpeggio, you have C, E, G, B, but you're leading off with the seventh note, the lower of the seventh note, like a pickup note almost, but it's just still the same exact rhythm, rhythmic value. So uh, let's start from the E, the pentatonic type of movement. So right after that open D, we play the B, and then the C major, sorry, me C major seven arpeggio. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Start from the E again. And I don't know how all of this went by. I like, I would never just create that on the fly because the, the order of the notes that I played, it was just very, I don't know. Like I said, it was in the moment. So I just, uh, I don't know, I was just going with it. So I would never map that out on my own, but because I was in that moment, I used my ear, I used my instinct, uh, and it, it just came out right. <laughs> so uh, yeah, so after the E, and now we have four more notes to go. That's the end. All right, so we go back down to the A, G, F, F sharp. Okay, so we're just circling around to the F sharp, very, very, very common move uh, in improvisation, just circling around to the third or the major third of the key center. And if you listen to me a lot, I do that a ton. So those are the last four notes of this lick. So A, G, F, F sharp, and then we're back home to the D. So all together, I'm going to do it slow and then we're going to do it real time. All right. One, two, three, four, one. Okay, and I'll try to have this tab written out as well so you guys can follow along. I know the fingering is a little bit 
unorthodox as well. So we go through that very, very quickly, uh, just so you guys can get a, a gist of how I'm positioning this. So we have, and it's almost different every time. So one, two, three, four, one. So that fingering right there is just, I'm using the second finger or the first finger, sometimes depending on where I am playing that bass line. So the second finger, because I'm shifting back, it's very, it's a very unorthodox movement. But the best way is actually to play four, three, two, two, three, one, three. See that? So once you get to this section of the lick, your second finger is basically assigned to this fret. Uh, you don't really move any lower than that, only maybe one time. So I'll show you. So I'll start at the A or the B. Okay, so now that I'm shifting back with the first finger because I'm playing that F on the E string, but I'm right back to that same position once I continue the lick or the phrase. See, my hand doesn't move. My hand movement or placement doesn't even move or positioning uh, after that second part of the lick. So the first part is what you have to really worry about, that shifting. After this, you're good. So it's really not a lot of movement as far as shifting up the fretboard, but it's a lot of movement separately within the notes and the open strings. So make sure your notes are coming out clean, clear, and precise. If you guys are interested in learning uh, any more like this or developing a concept or developing the ability to be able to create your own licks and you know get lost in the music or get lost in the sauce, as I said earlier, uh, that was weird. Anyway, if you're interested in that, we have tons of courses. We have live classes uh, every single Thursday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time uh, inside of the Academy. I'll put the link in the description, DerekBennett.com. If you guys are interested in that, uh, we have video Q&A sections. You get personal feedback from me. We have tons of stuff. It's just hard for me to list everything right now. You be the judge of that. Go check it out if you're interested. Also, if you haven't subscribed, if you're new here, hit that red subscribe button, uh, hit the notification bell. We upload every single Saturday. Uh, so just make sure you're here somewhere on YouTube somewhere just to make sure you get that notification. And also you don't miss anything that we do ever because it may be more than once a week. But anyway, make sure you know so coming out clean, clear and precise. If you have any questions, you already know what to do. Love chopping it up with you guys in the comments. And until next time, I'll see you.